I'm now joined by George Sullivan. George is coming off of a successful UFC debut at UFC on Fox 10 against Mike Biggie Rhodes, where George won by unanimous decision. George, thank you very much for joining me. Hi, how you doing, man? How you doing? Doing well, and congratulations on uh, winning your UFC debut. Thank you very much. It was an honour to be uh, fighting for the UFC, and uh, it was a great, great show. I was very, very honoured. What was it? Uh, I mean, we, let's let's get let's look, talk a little bit about the build up and the, uh, you know, and the emotion stuff because you you've been fighting for quite a while. Uh, uh, you've and you, you've had a lot of fights. Uh, before this fight, you were fourteen and three. You had seventeen fights. So, what was it like finally getting the call up to the big show? Well, you know, when I finally got the call, I couldn't talk. I didn't even know what to say other than okay. Um, you know, Kurt, Kurt was acting like I wasn't going to be fighting. My fight got canceled for the fight that I was supposed to have, like, four weeks from, from that fight. And he put me on speakerphone, and he's like, I just want you to know that you're in the FNU UFC. And I was like, no way. And he's like, will you fight Pascal Krauss? I was like, yes. <laughs> you know, I was like, okay. I mean, I didn't know what to say. And to have that call, my heart stopped. It was an unbelievable feeling. And any, any of the fighters out there that, or trying to get there, it's worth every moment. Just keep fighting. Yeah, I mean, you mentioned your opponent then. Of course, we had a few changes. So firstly, how did the change of opponent affect you? Because it was changed quite late on, wasn't it? Well, I went from fighting a uh, small guy, Chris Curtis, for the Cage Fury, who was like 5'9", or 5'10". I think he's 5'9". And he's a southpaw. So I was training for a southpaw, but that was only two weeks from the fight camp. So it really, I don't really watch tape on fighters because I don't think there's... You know, the guy can always change. I just kind of go in there and adjust myself. So then when I thought I was fighting Kraus, he's not a striker, really. He's more of a jiu-jitsu guy, I think. But I really, uh, it didn't matter to me who I fought. I didn't really care. And what was it like as well being the opening bout on uh, and fighting on Fox TV as well? Amazing, because there's no time to be nervous, no time to be anything. So it's awesome. I'm used to fighting late into the night. Like when I fight for Cage, when I used to fight for Cage here, I'd fight 12, 1 o'clock in the morning, so you're waiting all day. By the time we woke up, we were in the UFC meeting, we were in the UFC van, out of the bus, and then I was fighting. So yeah, I loved it. I loved fighting that clip. That clip was awesome. Plus, we fought at 4 o'clock in the afternoon our time. You know, it was, it, you didn't have time to be nervous. It felt awesome. I mean, I, was, I had the nerves, but it didn't have that stomach gut. Uh, Feeling, you know, I, I I was I felt okay. What was the build up like of, of fight week as well, and what was the what was the buzz like from the fans and the media? Oh, it was awesome. I mean, not many people know who I am. Uh, there were the select few, but I had a ton of people fly out to see me fight too. But uh, the ones I did fight, the fans all came up to me, and uh, it was awesome, awesome feeling. They make everything worth fighting for, man. It's uh, when the fight's over, just just the way they come up to you and talk to you, I love it. It's my honor to fight for them, and it's a good feeling. I mean, it was a really, really tough fight. I mean, Mike Rhodes is a tough guy, you know, just as you are. Uh, going into that third round, it, it it seemed like it was one apiece. How did you feel going into the third round? Did you feel it was one apiece as well? Uh, yeah, I mean, I know I had the first, and then the second, he was hitting me with cleaner shots. Uh, in the third round, I think, because I kept backing him up more, I think that's what we took it from him. Um, I just couldn't breathe, so I wasn't sure how I looked. I had a really bad sinus infection, so every time I would throw three punches, I'd be out of oxygen. I just had, and then when I went, I had blood coming out of my nose inside. It was going down my throat. I had a really bad sinus infection, so I kind of felt like I wasn't doing as good as I could have. But I knew that I had more more strikes landed than him. I knew I threw a lot more strikes than him. So I felt comfortable knowing I would win the decision. Yeah, I mean, watching the fight, it seemed like you had you were landing the power shots, uh, and he was kind of picking his shots, and he was landing, he he was landing shots, especially in that round two. But every time you landed a shot, it was like it was worth a couple of his shots because of the because of the power you had yeah. in your punches. Yeah, I felt a difference when I hit him. He backed up. When he hit me, it just kind of it was like you know, just enough to piss me off. It wasn't, there was no power there. Not that he doesn't have power, I'm not saying he can't, but I didn't get hit with anything that rung my bell. I've been hit harder before that, so it was enough not to keep me back enough. Going into that third round then, what, what did your corner say to you? What, was there a sense of urgency not to, not to leave it so close? Because 
it, he, he seemed to take the momentum back in that second round because you won the first round. It appeared he won the second round. So at that stage, you looked like the momentum was with him, yeah. but you turned it right round him in the third round. In the beginning of the second round, he had you know, at the end of the first round, he had me that that Kimura. Not that it would have submitted me, but my arm was dead when I went to strike in the beginning of the second round. That's why I couldn't jab. I guess because I was fighting it for so long, it kind of gassed my left arm a little bit. So once we started moving around towards the end of the second, I started jabbing more. I had to get my arm back. It was a little dead, you know? So um, I think once I loosened back up, I started feeling it, and I was able to move more. But um, I think they just told me to keep going and keep pushing and pushing and pushing and keep the pace up. And I, I feel like I did that. Yeah, you certainly did. You certainly got stronger as the fight went on. How did you feel after the fight? And have you got any injuries? And when would you like to get back in and compete again? Uh, no injuries. Everything felt fine, but I got the flu. I had 101 fever. I didn't even get to celebrate. We went back. I had dinner. Uh, I got back to Jersey, and I had 101.4 fever. I had one up. My fiancé got sick. My coach got sick. <laughs> Dan Fisher was in the hospital with the flu. We all got sick. So... I'll be back to training next week. I'm not taking any time off because I never know when the UFC is going to call. So I'll, I'll be ready to go. You'll never have to hear me say that I'm not fighting because I'm not ready. I'm going to be ready at all times. And is welterweight your weight class? Is that where you'll be staying? Yeah, welterweight, yeah. Yeah, I'm a big welterweight. And I'm very comfortable. I have, I only have two fights at 85. And I, have only, I have 18 fights at... Uh, 18, 19 fights, I have 17 fights at 70, so I'm going to stay there. Now, you mentioned earlier on in the interview as well about Kurt, and of course you're referring to Kurt Pellegrino, who's a, he's a UFC veteran. What's it like training with Kurt? Oh, it's amazing. He's fought all over the world. Uh, his experience is second to none, really. Uh, he's also one of the best grapplers in the world, and he changed my life. I, my, my fight team fell apart, and he took me in, and... It's just a learning experience, and to bleed with them, that's what he said to me. He said, step in a cage that I bled in, and it meant the world to me to, to fight in the same cage as him. To have him next to me makes things so much easier. I know what to expect. You know, he's, he's an awesome coach. He's an awesome friend, and I couldn't fight for a better guy. Yeah, he's always, he's always come across when watching him compete and watching him carry himself. He's always come across as being one of the good guys, so I'm, I'm not surprised to hear to hear you say that. Have you got your eye on anybody you'd like to face next or are you just waiting to see what, what's on offer? I don't care who. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a kid waiting on Christmas right now. I mean, whatever gift the UFC gives me is a gift to me. It's like waiting on Christmas, you know what I mean? <laughs> I don't care who it is. I just want to stay healthy and put on a I want my knockouts. I don't knock a lot of people out. I want to knock people out. I'm never happy with a decision win. But considering I pulled that off not feeling too well, I'm beyond happy. So uh, I'll take that, and I'm going to go for the knockout in the next fight. You can mark my words. Yeah, I can see on your record that you like to knock people out. I can, You can see that from from the majority, majority of your wins are, are knockout. Well, thank you very much for your time. It's been great uh, having the opportunity to talk with you. Thank you. If you ever need anything from me, don't hesitate to ask, and it's been an honor. Thank you so much. That's no problem. I'll certainly be in contact again. But before we let you go, I just want to give you a chance to do any shout outs. I want to shout out any friends, family, sponsors, and also let the listeners know about your Facebook and Twitter. Um, yeah, thank you, uh, NutriShop. Thank you, Fear the Fighter. Uh, thank you, Hibusa, Auto Shopper, New Jersey MMA News. Um, I want to thank my fiance, Matt Jennings. Uh, he's in Point Pleasant, New Jersey, the best strength and conditioning coach. Uh, I have to thank Evolution Martial Arts. Uh, engineered MMA, uh, Mickey Red down in the Everlast Boxing Camp down in Hoboken, New Jersey, Dan O'Cone, Denver, my wrestling partner, um, Justin Haskins, all the guys at KP to MMA, uh, New Jersey Fight Shop. I thank you all, all my sponsors. You know I love you. And uh, that's it. Well, it's been a, a real pleasure. And I can't wait to see you get in the octagon and compete again. Thanks again, my man. Take care.